What's up, everybody, and welcome to my Impact Wrestling Review. As we are about, what, a couple days away from Turning Point, so they got an Impact Plus show coming up, uh, Turning Point and whatnot, and a lot of matches on, uh, and titles on the line. What do they have uh, for this show coming up, huh? What do they have for it? Well, we do kick it off, though, with Steve Macklin versus Laredo Kid. If Steve Macklin can win this match, he will be added to the X Division uh, title match and making a triple threat this Saturday at Turning Point. Um... Good match to kick off the show, I will say that, um, and whatnot. Um, like I've said before about Steve Macklin, Steve Macklin, like I said, Steve Macklin is just on a different level. Like I said, it's almost hard to believe that this guy was in the Forgotten Sons and whatnot, because this guy just has something about him. He did end up winning this match against Laredo Kid, uh, hitting a drill claw on him. Obviously, I do believe Trey Miguel will still retain the title, though, but Laredo Kid will most likely be uh, taking a pinfall. Even if Steve Macklin has been in triple threat matches and whatnot before, uh, he may not be uh, pinned, but, you know, you know, he may have lost, but he wasn't pinned or submitted. So, I don't think he's going to win the title this Saturday against, um, against uh, Trey Miguel, but uh, like I said, man, the guy is just too damn good right now. Nothing really bad to say much about Steve Macklin. Uh, next, though, we did go to Ace Austin Madman Fulton, as they asked if, you know, Ace accepts Chris Saban's, uh, challenge at Turning Point. Ace basically said, you know, I don't have to, I already got my, uh, I beat Chris Saban t-shirt. Saban did show up and say, your shirt looks stupid, and, you know, uh, as a former world champion, he had to, he didn't have to resort to cheating, which he had to, he has done that in the past, though, as a heel, but Ace basically, you know, all right, I'll start, I'll accept the match. He ended up brawling with, um, Saban then, as, uh, Saban was able to, I guess, uh, Saban was able to, you know, um, knock Madman Fulton into, like, a refrigerator and locking him in there. So, he got out of Dodge. So, um, yeah, um, I guess he's locked in there till uh, whenever he gets out. Uh, next, though, the inspiration. Uh, Jesse McKay and Cassie Lee went against the Undead Bridesmaids. Where is Sue Young in all this? Like, I know she made them, but you think Sue Young would show up and do something about this whole thing since, you know, these are undead bridesmaids. But the inspiration of getting the win, though, um, Decay ended up coming out then, basically surrounding the inspiration as they kind of cowered in fear as they held the titles up. So they are next in line as for their rematch for the tag titles this Saturday at uh, Turning Point. Uh, next, though... I guess they're still doing whatever with Chelsea Green and Jordan Grace for the digital media title. I don't have no idea what that digital media title does. Like, it's not a bad thing, but it's like, I don't really know what this belt is here for at this point. Like, it was like some inner gender belt I heard it was supposed to be. I don't I don't get it. I haven't really watched any of those Tuesday things for um that digital media belt. So I don't really have much to say about that. Um, but Matt Cardona talked about how he was this close. The, you know, still getting a shot at Moose, but W. Morris, he said, you know, uh, you, you're not always ready, you weren't close, so I guess Cardona challenged him at a uh, turning point in a match, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Eddie Edwards was being interviewed about turning point against his match with Moose, but Moose attacked him and fought him all the way to ringside, he ended up powerbombing him onto the apron, basically taking a chair around his neck, throwing him into the ring post, had put him like onto a table then, and was gonna like almost concerto, but Eddie got out the way, he hit Moose several times with a chair, hit him with a big tiger bomb and kneed him onto the table, which he ended up getting a bigger ladder, a giant big ladder, and was gonna jump off of it onto Moose, but Moose got out of dodge and headed for the hills then, as he was pissed off in the back, Next thing you know, Scott DeMore saying, all right, you want to do all these weapons? You want to come do stuff and start stuff? All right, Full Metal Mayhem this Saturday. You and Eddie Edwards for the title. So, yeah, um, Full Metal Mayhem is happening. Uh, I know they show Mercedes Martinez, uh, you know, hyping up for um, Turning Point. Same thing with Mickey James. Hikaleo went against Doc Gallows, which, you know, not a bad match, but... I know they're faced for the tag titles this Saturday, but are these like two heel teams right now? I don't think people really know who to cheer other than both of these these teams were either in Bullet Club or from Bullet Club in the past. So where is this really going? Okay, I don't I don't really sure because like it's Bullet Club versus you know OG Bullet Club, but where is it really going? I, I'm not understanding how this feud is happening at this point. It's the name is kind of like the C Squad people you sent from Bullet Club anyway, so it's not even the bigger names, but. Next, though, Deanna Peraza was being interviewed after she has not been seen the past three, four weeks um, since Bound for Glory. Uh, she did wear all black and basically talked about, uh, you know, when are you coming back? 
and she basically didn't really want to answer any questions and stuff. Basically says I'm only doing this interview because I'm contractually obligated to be here. And say, so, you know, I, have to, I don't have to explain anybody anything. I'm the virtuosa. I just analyze my mistakes and I correct them moving forward. And she's a two times knockouts champion. And yes, twice now because she has lost the belt. But now um, everyone's just going to have to wait to see what my next step is. So I don't have to answer it to anybody. Uh, so yeah, we'll figure out whatever's going on with Deanna then, whenever she shows back up. Juice Robinson and, uh, Dave Finley basically talk about how a rough time getting to the tag titles through the Bullet Club interference, but Scott Moore basically said, uh, nah, 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 you guys need to get your shit together and basically go against Decay this Saturday then. I know they showed a Violent by Design promo with Eric Young talking about freedom. Actually, cool promo, though, I will say that. Still talking about Rhino because he's facing him this Saturday at Turning Point. The Kiss Demon, um... And Decay winning his giant swinger followed by Hernandez. I really have much to say about this match other than the Kiss Demon and them winning. Which Johnny Bravo ended up talking swinger in the back then. Basically swing uh um swinger Johnny Bravo in the back then. Or Bravo talking to Swinger, wrong words around, but uh it basically um Swinger walked off. Decay showed up then, you know, um messing with Bravo. Bravo said, I wish I could help Swinger out. Uh, and everything, you know, we should go back to the wrestle house, but Rosemary says, oh, we need some sweet virgin blood. So, we'll see where that goes, but in the main event, though, we did get Minoru Suzuki versus Josh Alexander. Obviously, the best match out of this whole show by default. A good match, though, I will say that. I believe this is kind of near the end of the, um, Minoru Suzuki American Tour at this point. Uh, Josh Alexander, they get the win with the Jade Driller and everything. I know they showed Josh's wife celebrating, but still a really good match. I like towards the end, though, with him and Suzuki just... Like I said, you already know it's going to be a brawl and whatnot, especially with these two. So, a damn good match out there. Um, like I said, I've enjoyed Minoru Suzuki's American Tour. Just from Impact to AEW to any indie show, to New Japan Strong, all that stuff. But I believe he is back now in New Japan for the World Tag League that's going on right now. But, um, yeah. I, I, like I said, I've enjoyed Suzuki in America. Would have loved to see a little bit more of him do, you know... And whatever company, like, bringing more Suzuki Hill members and whatnot other than Lance Archer. I wish he would have probably came back for these shows on Impact, but his neck is hurt right now, so, um, can't really do much. I will say, I, the best Suzuki match I have in America he's done, you know, in these past month or two is the, um, one with Danielson and whatnot and Rampage, so I enjoyed that one a lot, but... Overall, still, so him and Josh Alexander put on a damn good match out there. But before the show ended, they showed Giant Swinger in the back. And I know there was a lot of people back there from the Swinger Girls to um, Madison Rain to Caleb and Decay and others. And what do they do? They go back to Wrestle House. And honestly, I don't want to see Wrestle House too. I don't. Okay, listen. I don't hate Wrestle House. I thought Wrestle House was funny. The thing is this. I don't need Wrestle House on uh, taking up a lot of show every week. If you put it on YouTube, that's okay. But I'm having to take up half the TV time. And listen, I know it's more lower tier guys this time on here. And I understood more than last time, given that it was the pandemic. Well, it's still the pandemic right now. But this is when it was like empty arenas and whatnot. So I get why they did the past the time. But it just drove on, just drove along too much. And it was more, swing, uh, you know, Wrestle House than the actual show and Impact itself. So I just kind of got tired of it after a while. So I've seen on YouTube. It's not like you're going to get Tommy Dreamer saying match time. Throughout these shows, I don't think we're getting Tommy Dream is still laying low right now due to the whole plane ride from hell episode and with the dark side and stuff. But I, I don't know. I believe people stop bitching and moaning about Tommy Dreamer at this point. But I don't know. I'm sure he'll be back on TV at some point. But yeah, I don't really want to see Russell House again. So I don't know. I really just put it on YouTube though. Other than that, it was an okay episode of Impact though, especially going to Turning Point this Saturday. I enjoyed Suzuki and um. Alexander and whatnot, but they just build what they could to turn in points. So we'll see what happens this Saturday with that show. But other than that, I'm out of here. See you guys later. Peace.